Hello dear all, my name is Kate and welcome, welcome to this channel. Today we are visiting arguably one of the most beautiful cities in Germany, Rothenburg ob der Tauber. Fairly complicated name for... I think if any city would be worthy of such a complicated name, it would be this one. So in this video I'm going to tell you about the history of the city, what to eat, what to see here, what you should know about the place. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to put the like. After a short intro we will start the journey. Rothenburg of the Tauber is truly an incredibly beautiful city where every tower, every house, city walls and gates are brought to perfection. If there were Oscars given out for city beauties, I strongly believe that Rothenburg of the Tauber would deserve one. It's a fairly small town, but statistically speaking, it's the third most visited city in Germany. It is located in the historical region of Middle Franconia in Bavaria. It will impress you with its medieval charm, old winding cobbled streets, medieval architecture, amazing historical atmosphere. You will be charmed with the colorful gingerbread houses of the medieval ages. You don't even have to try to imagine yourself in the medieval times. I think the atmosphere really gets you there by itself. The city is rightfully considered one of the most authentic old towns in Bavaria. Rothenburg has glorious history. Once it used to be a pride of Franconia and considered to be a center of trade. But even today it's still pretty, it is really busy and noisy because every year over 2 million tourists visit the town and I could actually feel it. If you look at the, uh, if you look at some of the shots, you could see how crowded it is to this day, but I don't think it takes away from the charm. If you stay here overnight, it's gonna be very quiet in the mornings and evenings. So I didn't, therefore I enjoyed the full hustle and bustle of it. The popularity of Rothenburg up the Tauber obviously comes from its beauty, its history and the like, but it also comes from its location. The city is located on the intersection of two most popular routes for tourists in Germany, the Romantic Route and the Road of Castles. From the natural perspective, the city also is very well located. Impressively, it rises above the valley of the Tauber River. No wonder the city is called Ob de Tauber, which basically directly translated as fortress over the river or fortress over the river And now a little bit to the history of the city. The first houses of first settlements in this area appeared in 960. So the settlement, if you're starting from that time period, the city is over 1000 years old. Two centuries later, in early 1000s, fortress was built and the largest settlement arose there. The geographical position played an important role uh, in the city's history. Rothenburg up the Tauber became a center of trade, developed rapidly and prospered as any other city would. In 13th century, the settlement was given a status of a free imperial city, so basically becoming independent. This meant that the locals were directly subordinate to the king and for the most part were independent. In terms of more worthy experiences and places to visit, the first on my list would be Museum of Medieval Crime. It's a museum that filled with sort of a sinister charm, I would say. It has a collection of all sorts of legal documents, stories of legal pursuits and the like, and very, very cruel punishments. Among most famous exhibits would be devices of torture, 
chastity belt, colors for grumpy women, there was such a thing apparently, straightening swords, don't ask me what it is, have no idea. The most interesting things would be the old police cards <laughs> that look like cages on wheels. And then this kind of cage where petty thieves were locked for days on end without water or food and locals could go around shaming them and throwing things at them or whatever it is and petty thieves and petty crimes would include something like stealing um, an apple right or stealing a piece of bread or whatever so the punishments were truly disproportional to the crime from our perspective at least To see the city from afar, to have a better understanding of it, I would recommend walking through a nearby park, and then from there you could see the city in its full glory. and back to the city's history. Unfortunately, in 14th century, the fortress was destroyed due to a large earthquake. It didn't prevent further development of the city. However, the city sort of didn't stop its development. At the beginning of 15th century, the number of inhabitants exceeded the mark of 6,000 people. Today, it's a village. Back then, it was a mega metropolis. So this was called Golden Age of Rothenburg and the further history of the town is unfortunately sad. By the end of 15th century the Golden Age was effectively over and the further history of the town would be fairly tragic. First 30-year war, settlement was occupied several times, robbed and attacked, prosperity gave way to decline. There were also a number of black death or the plague attacks here as well as anywhere else in Europe and after all of this cities seem to fall into a deep dream. There's always a silver lining so to say right and because of this dream we could say that this is the reason why it managed to retain its original medieval appearance that we love it for today. In the 19th century Rottenburg became part of Bavaria when Germany became united and Rottenburg started again developing now not as a trade center but as a center of tourism. Certainly a worthy site to visit would be the Town Hall or Rathaus as they say in German, located on the Market Square, this marvelous building you can see right now. It consists of two buildings, the white side and the brown side. It's an 800 year old facade built in Gothic style. The Town Hall is crowned by Renaissance Tower, 60 meters high. You can actually go all the way up if you have enough energy. 220 steps that is, but it might make sense to start with it. <laughs> you still have the energy to do that. You'll have a breathtaking view over the old town from there. Other impressive sites obviously include the old city wall. It retained most of the original defensive elements, towers and the gates. Those are the most beautiful sites in the city. In medieval ages there were seven city gates that led to the city and 42 towers protected the wall. Again, if you're staying overnight, I think you would really make the most out of your stay in the city because you could walk around when it's actually quiet and it would give you a much more authentic medieval experience, I would say. Another thing worthy of your attention and time would be the cuisine. A lot of the original medieval age recipes were preserved in some of the restaurants, so definitely worth checking that out. Uh, so local Franconian cuisine has quite a reputation for pretty good dishes, especially local desserts. There are local desserts called Schneeballen, which translated directly as snowballs, made from deep fried dough, what can be better than deep fried dough, <laughs> covered with chocolate, powdered with sugar, hence white and round. And they are definitely both unbelievably calorically dense and unbelievably tasty. 
Now we're slowly making our way out of the city, through the city defense. They're very impressive sites for sure. As I pointed out, we only stayed here for a day, unfortunately no overnight stay. It would be interesting to know how was your experience if you were to stay overnight. Let me know whether you like the town or not, whether you're planning a visit. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to put the like and see you soon.